Hey guys, today I am going to go after one of the most uh, shadier things in Magic the Gathering, and that is the idea of Vintage Sealed. So Vintage Sealed, uh, Pay Money Wobby, and kind of reminded me of this, is almost always going to be repackaged. Um, you see that from Pokemon. Uh, you see that with Dumb Money and Crypto Guru, right? He came there and they said, hey, we're opening that. And he's like, oh, F me. And it turned out it wasn't the first edition Pokemon cards. It was, I think, base set two and, you know, all these newer cards, even though the story was this, bo this box had been purchased, put in a safe for 25, 20 years, never taken out of the safe. Well, then how did it get base set two? Who, who knows, right? Uh, or the G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe? Right? That was the most valuable card. I mean, case. It was $3.1 million. And it turned out not even to have Pokemon cards. It had G.I. Joe cards. Experts from BBCE. All the way to, you know, everyone in the Pokemon community. Vouched for it. Said it was legit. And then turned out it was fake. <laughs> you know. So... Let me, let me just throw you a proposal here, and this is a direct question to Alpha Investment. How does he actually know if a box is not resealed? A box changes hands so often, it would be very difficult, in my opinion, to know exactly, and to even have a resealed expert. In fact, BBCE, who is, quote, the expert in wax, right? They couldn't figure out the stop open tape was not real. Like, they couldn't figure out anything. So if these experts being paid hundreds of thousands, if not millions of do dollars to verify the authenticity of these cases and these card boxes cannot be trusted, um, then why would we trust an individual with no knowledge about this, like Alpha Investments? Just because he's seen a bunch of boxes, it doesn't make sense. I would highly, highly not, I would, I would tell you guys, stay far, far away from stuff that you don't understand. And I don't think anyone understands Vintage Sealed. And the problem is, the problem is really obvious, right? Hey, don't open it, guys. If you open it, it will lose value. Don't open it, guys. Don't open it, guys. Don't open it, guys. And yeah, I mean, that's the whole scam in my opinion, right? Let me sell you. Let me sell you a box. You don't know what's in it, but trust me, the box is worth a ton of money. And uh, just please don't open it. In any other scenario, we would probably be a little skeptical. But because it's vintage magic, yeah, baby, we ain't going to open it. I think this is pretty, pretty bad. And let me explain why this kind of culture and vintage magic is so bad. The biggest fear they have is that you open it. I, I was actually talking to one uh, a guy on Facebook or friends on Facebook, and we're talking about what happens if Alpha Investment opens even one box of GI Joe. What happens to the value of his collection? You know, he's sitting behind him, and there's a bunch of Urza Legacy boxes. What if one of those Urza Legacy boxes is resealed? Not because he resealed it, because somebody sold it to him. He's buying from many different sources. Many different Patreons. What if one Patreon, you know, just stuck it to him and said, you know what? I'm going to sell him a bunch of fake boxes. And he opens it on live stream. And basically, people find out that, whoa, this box is resealed from somebody as legendary as Alpha Investment. This is a problem. And I would highly, highly recommend that for these older boxes, just simply don't buy them. There's too many hands. It's... 30 plus years on some of these boxes, you know, alpha boxes. Why would anyone want to buy this stuff unless it is going to be opened and like pay money Wubby showed? Um, being open does not mean it is real. In fact, he opened two of them out of two and both of them are not real. I definitely feel like uh, a issue at hand is that the price of these boxes are just so outrageous and so crazy um, that it doesn't make any sense, right? And that's why they don't want you to open them. But then you bump into a dude called Pay Money Wubby, and he's just opening them all, and every one of them is fake. 
Well, what does that tell you about the vintage marketplace? Now, everyone's reputation, it, it's very likely that if you have this type of asset to sell, you have more of this asset to sell. And you're going to keep selling and selling and selling. Again, this last unlimited pack didn't even have magic cards. It had some other game on it. Um, it is very, very, un very likely that this individual that is, or these individuals that have sold this type of asset, they have other assets that are valuable. Maybe they have revised decks or maybe they have alpha beta. Maybe they have a lot of other unsealed product and they're just selling them on eBay or on whatnot or whatever else is happening here. There is a major concern. And the major concern is you don't see many people opening vintage. I think some. I think somebody opened an Urza Legacy box and it was resealed. Like, if there is a way to make money, trust me, Magic players will make money. And this is kind of why I like singles or even more recent boxes. No one's going to fake a War of the Spark box because if you could do that, you could fake one of these boxes, right? With the wrapping and the technique and the expertise and the foil. I would highly recommend that people take an honest look at this hobby and tell me that they don't think that people are going to scam. I would take an honest look at this hobby. Who's in the hobby? Criminals. Now, actually, I was talking to the Facebook guy about the um, the Nazi individual. Uh, and so he buys a, the Nazi buys a real Black Lotus, sh pretends that he received a fake Black Lotus, and then gets all his money back, plus gets to keep the real Black Lotus. This is not a community that is based on, and the Nazi guy has like 14 convictions, 10 convictions for like mail fraud. This is a community where I think a lot of people, given the opportunity, will screw you over if they can. You know, there's a lot, you know, the number of fake cards that come in a collection, and these people don't know. I, I, I know they don't know because 99% of their collection is good, but then you see a fake card and you tell them, oh, yeah, look at this. It's fake. You know, this is why it's fake. We'll lie test it. And we'll green dot test it. it won't, it's not going to pass. But the sad part is, even though 99% of their cards are real, the 1% of their cards that tend to be fake are the lotuses and the, and the moxes and things of that nature, the underground seas. Right, they're they're the ones the the high value cards. So you, you do a deal with a person, and you're hoping you know you're doing a deal because they got Black Lotus. Black Lotus turns fake. Well, I don't really want the rest of your collection. You know, I, it's it's a tough scenario to be part of. But at least then I have the ability to identify. If I make the mistake, it's my mistake, right? Here, I just don't think enough people know what to look at. I don't think there is an expert in sealed vintage product. And if there is an expert, let's bet on it. We'll open a bunch of sealed product. You know, and we'll see. Uh, if they get it's like BBCE. BBCE was fine certifying bo boxes and cases of Pokemon when they didn't think it would be open. It's just, it's like dumb money and then the crypto game. They're they're all fine and they talk a good game until they realized, oh shit, this thing's getting opened. Then you see then you see who they truly are, right? Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Bye, guys.